Well, greetings to you from me, Colin, from the Southern Counties Baptist Association staff team. You'll have probably noticed the candles. I thought that today we might consider the theme Rays of Darkness. Rays of Darkness because we have just had the clocks change, the nights are drawing in, it's getting dark earlier than ever. Today it's raining and uh, dark because of that reason as well, as I record this. And we, as it were, have almost entered a phase where the environment around us is mirroring some of what we've been experiencing now for nine months. Nine months where things that we would uh, really rather not have had to go through have happened as we found ourselves very, very restricted from being with friends and family, things that normally would have brought great light and joy into our lives, we've not been able to do in the same way. We've been restricted. A time when we have missed being able to gather with our sisters and brothers to worship God, to sing God's praise, to pray, and just a sense that actually we are journeying together as friends and as disciples. We've missed that that light has been extinguished, at least to some extent. It's been a time when, for some of us, there's been major health concerns for ourselves or for others. And along the way, that's been made much more difficult because of the sheer strain that's on our health service at this time. For some of us, actually, we've faced what it means for ourselves or someone else to have COVID-19. And so that also has been an area of stress and strain. For me personally, for 10 months, I've had uh, a hazy eye, uh, a cloudy eye because of a graft on my cornea that's been rejecting. And that's been very hard going, very disorientating. And it's made all the ways in which we normally use the health service a bit more challenging. For some of us, we're aware that there's um, a threat to our income and our security and our job at this time. And that's a great concern. And we're wondering what might happen longer term for our job and therefore our home's and our families in that sense. There's been a shadow over our security and over our income. For many of us, if not all of us, we sense that uh, along with what's been going on with COVID-19, there's also been that sense of uh, the stark contrast and relief of people that uh, were already marginalised, it being much more apparent about what's been going on for them. And so we've been aware of new a new need to pursue justice with all that we've got, which reflects God, who is talked about as the God who pursues justice and seeks justice among us again and again in the Bible. The shadow of needing to seek justice So in all sorts of ways, there's been a dimming or an extinguishing of things which we have normally taken for granted. Of course, the one that actually has affected all of them is the coronavirus itself. And the longing for there to be a breakthrough for a vaccine, as well as for the ongoing treatments that's there. Just that sense of how long, O oh Lord, how long that we share with all people in all places across the globe. The shadow that it's cast and continues to cast going forward as well. We thought this might be over in a few weeks, then we thought it might be a few months. Now we know that actually it is going to go through uh, into the new year with all sorts of impact and effects on things that actually normally have brought us great joy uh, as we've gathered together, not least leading up to and over Christmas as well. Because all these things are things which 
we rightly enjoy and are part of our lives, but we start to rely on their tokens and signs and symbols of the life that God grants us and the goodness of, um, uh, of God's gifts. But um, there's always the chance, there's always the danger that actually we settle for the gifts themselves rather than being able to concentrate as those gifts are dimmed or overshadowed or even extinguished on the God who gives them. And of course, the whole point of the darkness biblically is that it leads people to reach out for God and to understand that actually whatever else disappears, whatever else we lose, God is still God. Now, there is a resistance to the darkness, of course, in me and I expect in you. We never seek it out, of course, but uh, I'm intrigued by the people of God with Moses who they weren't really that great fans of the fact that Moses was prepared to go into this dense cloud where God was from the desert into the darkness of the cloud. When he did come out of the cloud, they were a little bit worried as well. Um, they were quite glad it was him and not them, frankly. And so in the end, he had to say, don't be afraid. God actually is wanting to refine you and help you to trust in him so that you actually live your lives well and don't sin. Darkness is a theme that grows us, is writ large into the Bible. Sometimes it's more known as desert, 40 years in the desert, 40 days in the desert. Sometimes it's about struggle and suffering. So we're told that Jesus himself learned obedience, learned what it was to live truly as the son, as the son of God, through his suffering and setbacks. Extraordinary statement. Jesus himself told a story of a seed needing to go in the ground if it was to bear much fruit, uh, into the moist, dark, dank, damp uh, abandonment of being placed under the surface of the earth until life emerged. So these are great and huge themes that are there. Uh, and uh, what the darkness does is it strips away and takes away from us what we would normally rely on and leads us to trust in and go with God rather than the things that we would normally trust in. When I talked about health earlier, one of the things I could have named was our mental health as a really important area for every person at the moment. And uh, one of the things that happens with our mental health is that all the things that we've normally relied on, or our sense of our self and identity, how we normally present ourselves, or the things we normally get to do, whether we're leaders or ministers, whether it's in our work or in our family or in the community, those things no longer function in the same way. We can't prop ourselves up by thinking I'm OK as a person because of these things. We're stripped naked, as it were. And in the end, it's just who we really are when we're not putting anything out there and putting on a show. Who we really are and God. So... Arguably, rays of darkness are the very things that most grow us. Often we don't grow during the good times and the easy times, although we obviously don't seek a bad time. <laughs> it's during the times when things are challenging that we most know we need to get back to basics and to trust God. And God is the God who actually, um, well, darkness is as light to God. There's no place we can go away from God's light. But it is actually God's light, not the light of other things that ultimately we're called to trust in and to stay with. So here is our story. Here is the story, the story of the cross and resurrection where darkness and light, terror and joy, loss and fullness are woven together in one word of grace and promise. A ray of darkness that proves to be a dart of love. May you know somehow that the darkness that you've experienced in different ways, the shadows, that within and through them, God is beckoning you to be the one when all the other things are extinguished and dimmed, to be the one who you turn to and trust in. 
with all your heart afresh. His light to guide your way and to be enough to give you the strength for each day. <laughs>